Well, some of you good people asked why the F-25 restoration project stalled a couple months ago. The easy answer, I drove back to Mexico to get her big sister ready to launch and go sailing. First up was completing the full top sides and cockpit repaint that had been primed back in November. Here's the Cabrales boatyard at night, lit up like a prison, which is great, got some security. Okay, what we're doing tonight is using this little tiny torpedo laser to make the new bottom paint line. Be the red laser line. Um, I just bumped it, so it's not set up accurately anymore, but I've already done the tape job. So what we have is on the boat, you see that little dimple right there? That is a mark made when the scum line was here, so I knew the exact water level and moved up three inches. Did that at multiple points around the boat. So that lets me take that laser level and just literally connect the dots. I was able to move it between that dimple over there and this dimple over here and get the tape line from the bow all the way back. It's got a nice level line now. This will be way better than it ever has been. And of course it was Rocky Point Bike Week, so I had to go check that out. Yeah! Yeah, those are our sailboat masts in the background behind the band. This was going on all night, two blocks away from where we're trying to sleep on the boat. So here we are refitting the rudder into the cassette now that the cassette's been modified. I extended this out to what the green tape is here so that we get a better pressure. Okay, I couldn't edit out that wind noise, so I was telling you that we finally finished doing a much better forward press and breakaway system on the back of the rudder cassette. So if the rudder were to hit a large object or strike the ground, the breakaway bolts here gear off and take the white insert out so the rudder could slip out the back of the cassette. And every time I go sailing, we do tie a emergency leash onto the rudder itself in case that were to happen. So here I'm pointing out that the cassette has had its final modifications now to angle the rudder forward such that 18% of its surface area is ahead of its pivot axis, and that's what gives the right amount of helm feel. When we first built the boat, it was too straight up and down like this piece of plastic here, and that made the tiller really heavy in your hand. So years ago I modified the cassette, but just finally now finishing the job to clean up this back end here and improve the breakaway system. Also took away the carpet and put in this orange plastic, thin orange plastic instead, so it slides up and down better. And all of this stuff worked great when we had her out sailing for two weeks. Well, it's the one week thrash. We're going to launch the night of February 8th, next Thursday. It's currently Thursday afternoon, so I've got the week. Got a bit of epoxy work to do here. And final paint, final white paint on the um, trim ring around. Let's see, that would be the port aft inspection hatch and the two larger inspection uh, openings, which I'll show you later, on the float bows. Those have been rebuilt with better waterproofing the lips, so I gotta paint them. Okay, so the main list, finish the motor steering, done. I actually crossed that off, did that this morning. Fuel system, I got the piece of hose I needed, do that tonight maybe. Fit the rudder to cassette, just finished. And install the new cassette end cap. I've drilled it, well, I'm actually not quite done. So another fast one's the bowsprit cotter pin and the diagonal beam braces, the aluminum braces under the boat. Some of them are not uh, nylock nuts, so I need to put Loctite where those are. Two of them I found have backed off when I got here. Uh, I 
got new backing plates to put on the float hardware, three on each float. Big job of servicing six of the winches, and hopefully I'll have time to do the two primary jib winches too, so all eight winches. Most of them are in a pile right there. And I need to go downstairs and go for a full clean out and then reinstall them, start the engine up. Uh, where's finish the fuel system? There it is, I have to do that still. But I have all the parts, then we'll fire the motor. Got new nav lights to put on, um, miscellaneous sailing gear, and line handling pieces have to go back on after the cockpit repaint and put in the depth, the new transducer. So that's the stuff that has to happen before we get launched. Once we're in the water, I plan to stay here in this harbor for a couple days. So that's a couple days of work down there too. But these are all things I could do if I'm out, um, you know, doing cruising mode. Sail, stop for a day, do a day of boat work. I'd like to get the instruments done before I leave here though. Okay, seven days, we're gonna jam. Here are all the projects, parts laid out. Basically, if I get this tarp cleaned off, I'm good to launch. But, oh man, look, the atmospheric river is coming. It's bright sunshine just a half hour ago. The wind's been blowing it at 20, 25 knots. Something's coming in. That's gonna mean we'll do inside work. I can clean winches inside the boat. I've got a nice big plastic tub I can work in. Actually, a tarp up on the net covered the work table down below. So it took a bit over an hour for each of six winches to fully disassemble, clean, and reinstall. Next up is final plumbing and the new 20 gallon permanent gas tank that replaced the portable cans we used to use. Most of this job was back in November when I had to significantly expand this combing box by dropping its floor into the cabin below. And from here we could finally reunite the Suzuki outboard with its replacement power head with the boat. Spent time with the motor today. Here's the crap that happens. Everything was done. I got the throttle linkage all set up again. And just as I finish, the little clip that holds this uh, linkage bar, this is coming up from the throttle cable assembly to, this is the actual gas throttle here. So this bar gets this little tiny, you can see that one, little plastic thing that holds it in place. If you don't have it, this wants to fall out as soon as you apply the throttle. So here's half the one that broke. That's the clip that goes over the bar. And then the circle that it goes through is now gone. So this tiny little cheap ass plastic $1 part has rendered the engine inoperable. So I don't really want to try to source this. So I just took the angle grinder. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see. See there's a washer now. I cut a groove and made a two slices, the top and bottom of this bar with the angle grinder and used a cotter pin. It went around this, caught in the grooves, and then used some pliers and carefully wrapped it around twice and tightened it up. And because it's all metal, I may never replace this. I will go ahead and buy the new little plastic part and have it on hand, but I think this is gonna work. I just tested it, it should be fine. Okay, tomorrow we're gonna run the engine again, just make sure we're 100%. This little project was a needed reinforcement of the deck and the cabin ceiling underneath the running backstay big pad eyes. After the new carbon and fiberglass had cured, the backing blocks were wrapped in no stick plastic and pressed the hard putty into a flat plane for bolting so that the core won't crush on the angle anymore. And that wrapped up the fabrication work for this long haul out. So it was time to blend in all of that new work with a fresh interior paint job and get things spruced up and ready to rock. And this is where we hope to be Thursday night at 2 a.m. The water should be right up there. This place has 20 foot, up to 20 foot tides. I love this part. What kind of funky paint job. So it starts looking beautiful. Here are my 
behind the uh, brown streaks of dirt coming down. We have motion after a year and a quarter of sitting in this spot right here. We're out of here. Start to clear David's boat. They're gonna take me to the center part of the yard right in front of the main travel lift. We'll be spent in the next 12 hours. Waiting for 2 a.m. high tide launch. The boat needs five meters high tide at this harbor in order to make it through the uh, slanted wall travel pit. And there are only three days, three high tides big enough for this whole month. And they are tonight, tomorrow night, and the next one. 2, 2.30 at 3 a.m. So the yard picks Thursday night at 2 a.m. And I'm ready. Coming to the gates from the gravel yard to the main cement. And there's the travel lift. Probably just get put right out here in the middle. a.m. She's tied up. Easy little transit. From where those lights are right over there. Ernesto's dock. 
Oh, she looks good. Nice. Unwind and go to sleep. So for seven years, there's been no protection over the top of the battery. This is here and the bed down on top. But start coming in, start thinking about tools and things falling under the primary battery contacts here. So now you can see the reflection and just cut a piece of acrylic and put on these little stringers here to hold the edge. Just get some finger grabbers. Looks good. Fits just right. The job comes off the list. Seven years in the making. So here are the original hatches. This border is new. This is part of the head and I've just taped on the frame rubber gasket. And then the holes are inboard, pulling pressure down on the gasket over here on the frame. So originally there was no outer rim on that. And the hatch just fits down in the groove here. And I caulked this close, which was a total mess. Still leaked. So hopefully with that much wider outer flange, we'll get a good seal. Oh shoot, I realize I have to go pre-drill all these holes too. Alright, one more step. The wind anemometer is going to go here, so there's a whole new hole in the top of the tower. Things going to sit over. I've got a piece of old stainless rigging wire running inside the tower. It converts to the string. I've got the string onto the new cable. So I can go down and pull, and the string will come right in. And here's the legs of my tower up there. Now you guys can just see that hole. There's a tube. It's 50 inches. This uh, old, what is that, quarter of inch stainless steel rigging makes. Oh, that's what. Really good uh, fish tape. There's the string. Oh, a little bit of friction there. Okay, I'm gonna go outside and wiggle it back and forth. I don't want to pull too hard here. There we go, we're through. I ended up cutting off the um, spades at the end because I realized it's a 100 foot cable and I want to shorten it anyway. It made it a lot easier. And I pulled two strings through for the future. This is organized chaos. It's because all these cabinets had to get emptied out to run new transducer cabling. This is the depth speed temperature sensor in the, down in the hull and this other one here that's already connected now is the wind transducer I'm putting my ray marine itc5 box inside the chart table cabinet here and the blue cable runs up to uh, one of my sea talk bridges and all that stuff comes up here in the ceiling there's another connector to send data up to the um, primary I-70 instrument and the rest of the data here in this cable bundle to the multifunction display. So I'm just down here doing the uh, painstaking, careful. I need to splice on all the spade connectors and figure out exactly where depth and speed and temperature go. It's all spelled out here in the instructions, not too hard. It's about a half hour later, the ITC5 uh, interpretation box is there, and then this is going up into the network, up on the uh, box, and I have just fired up right on the multifunction display, got depth, 11 feet, you see the true, sorry about the glare, but the true wind angle is moving around, and the true wind speed is 2.2 knots, and up here on our uh, dashboard, 2.3 knots, Got my true wind angle going, so we can find the depth. Yay! All right, this is all totally working. Okay, so the rest of the installation is to cut a bigger hole in here for this larger instrument. Button all this up on the tower. You can see wires hanging down. That's all done. You need to tuck stuff back in, put the covers back on. And uh, do a whole bunch of zip tie cable clamping. It's been a big project, but first time the boat has a wind instrument. And now a working depth finder we haven't had for a couple of years. 
which is important for anchoring around the Sea of Cortez. So the purists are gonna freak out that I put the anemometer right there on the uh, equipment tower. But remember, this boat has a rotating mast with no wires in it, and I just didn't want to invest in all the energy and money and heartache to deal with um, a wireless mast rotation compensation sensor for true wind angle. Um, all I really, really want here is to know true wind speed, mainly when it's coming from behind us, to know when to reef the boat. Otherwise, I try to sail to the uh, telltales anyway. So we can debate that in the comments. Should be intriguing, but I'm gonna do it this way and see how it goes. Also, because we store the boat a lot, this whole unit pops out with a simple screw and we can store that inside. So for longevity, that's another big factor. You can also pop out the uh, speed, depth, and temperature transducer and put the blanking plug in so our instruments stay clean and uh, lubricated and out of the environment when the boat is in storage. That's my game plan. So the Raven's Wing's few month haul out turned into 15 months for some important maintenance, some major improvements, and profound family events that made landlocked way more important for a while. So while Ruby stayed home, I got to see the little puppies grow into excellent guard dogs. We've made more new friends in the boatyard who we've now seen out cruising. Finally, a big thanks from me to the whole team at Cabrales for looking after our boat and providing a great place to work. Now the tools are put down, and the next video is all about good time sailing the Sea of Cortez. Thanks for watching, everybody.